Hello dear friend and welcome. Addiction to amphetamines, alcoholism, ego clashes, separation, the death of a brother addicted to cocaine, sudden death, cancer, and regrets marked the lives of the trio, the Bee Gees, one of the most iconic and influential bands in the history of music. Their roots are deeply intertwined with a remarkable journey that spans decades. Born on the island of England, brothers Barry, Robin, and Maurice embarked on a journey from a childhood filled with challenges to global fame. Music was the thread that connected these brothers as they faced obstacles, triumphs, and even tragedies, shaping not only their careers but also the music scene as a whole. Today's video delves into the captivating story of the Bee Gees, exploring the nuances of a trajectory that echoes through generations and continents, capturing hearts and minds with their music and unparalleled talents. Our journey begins on the tranquil island in England, where three future music legends were born in 1946. On September 1st, Barry Gibb came into the world, followed by twin brothers Robin and Maurice on December 22nd of the same year. The Gibb family was destined to create one of the most remarkable bands in history. After the tumultuous period of World War II, the Gibb family decided to move to Manchester, England, in search of new opportunities. The declining industrial scene in this city would be the stage where the musical talents of the brothers would begin to manifest for the world. The childhood of the Gibb brothers was marked by their distinct personalities. Robin, one of the twins, showed a curious spirit but also a somewhat delinquent behavior that caught the attention of local authorities. Due to issues like fires, his encounters with the police were not unknown. Facing these challenges, the local authorities in Manchester suggested that the family consider the possibility of immigrating to Australia. In August 1958, the parents, along with their children, embarked on a new journey, leaving their homeland in England and moving to Australia. The three brothers, accompanied by their older sister Leslie and younger brother Andy, started a new life in Redcliffe, near Brisbane. This significant change brought them closer to the stage where their musical journey would truly begin. In Australia, the brothers quickly immersed themselves in the local music scene, bringing their unique harmonies and passion for music to the stages. While finding ways to sustain themselves, they started performing to earn money. However, fate had something special in store for them. Two visionaries in the music industry, promoter Bill Gates and radio DJ Bill Gates, recognized the potential of the young talents. Gates gave the brothers their iconic name, BGs, an abbreviation of their initials combined with the initials of the two views. Originally meaning BGS, BGs, the name was later changed to BGs, becoming synonymous with one of the most influential and iconic bands in the history of music. The opportunity to perform at the city's racetrack in 1960 opened a new chapter in the musicians' history. They sang during race intervals, captivating the audience and becoming an attraction in their own right. The audience not only applauded but also expressed their support by throwing money onto the track as a reward for their unforgettable performances. Despite their talent and tireless efforts, they did not achieve the desired success in Australia at that time. In 1967, the Gibb family decided to return to England, hoping to find musical and international opportunities that would finally make sense for the band and lead them to the stardom they sought. The decision to return to England was a crucial step toward the success of the trio. They brought with them not only the lessons and experience gained during their journey in Australia but also a resilient spirit and unwavering determination. From there, the stage was set for the Bee Gees to etch their name indelibly in the history of music, capturing hearts worldwide and leaving a mark that would resonate for generations. The 1960s marked the meteoric rise of the Bee Gees in the music scene. With their undeniable talent and captivating harmonies, they quickly caught the attention of the industry. What shall I do? What shall I do? What shall I do? In 1967, they signed a contract with a record label and released a series of albums that won the hearts of fans around the world. The success was crowned by memorable hits like Massachusetts. The distinctive combination of their voices and skillful compositions set them apart in the saturated musical scene of that era. While navigating the path to success, 
the BGs also faced various challenges, including a period of creative rivalry with other music giants, such as the Beatles. Yes, competing with the Beatles is no joke. This healthy competition further fueled the band's creativity, leading them to create timeless classics. The year 1968 marked another milestone in the Bee Gees' journey with the release of their fifth album, titled, Album Title, a crucial chapter in the band's history. The continuous success of the band further solidified its reputation in the music industry. The release of the album, Odessa, in 1969 was marked by internal controversies and transformations in the band's lineup. The album featured powerful songs but also witnessed the departure of guitarist Vince Maloney, who was fired. Additionally, the relationship between the brothers Robin and Barry was strained by ego issues and disputes over vocal leadership, leading Robin to decide to leave the group. The impact of these changes was amplified by the departure of drummer Colin Peterson, who also chose to go his own way. This phase of challenges and transformations was a crucial moment in the Bee Gees' history. Despite the temporary separation, the Bee Gees did not let it be the end of their musical careers. Each brother pursued his own path, exploring new opportunities. Barry continued to shine as a songwriter and solo artist, releasing solo albums like Not Us, where his deep and emotive compositions showcased his ability to create timeless music. Robin also embarked on his solo musical journey, releasing albums. In addition, Robin ventured into composing soundtracks for films, including Gronks and Toys. Maurice, while continuing to be a pillar of the music industry as a BGs member, also excelled in music production and collaborated with other artists, working as a producer on albums for artists like Jimmy Ruffin and Lulu. Maurice also released a solo and instrumental album called Delana. Despite this separation, Faith had other plans for these feuding brothers, and in the mid-1970s, the Gibb brothers went through a moment of reconciliation. After facing disagreements and conflicts, they decided to reunite and continue their musical journey together. In an interview given during that time, Robin recalled that he was contacted by Robin during his vacation in Spain with the proposal to restart the band. The reunion was formalized on August 21, 1970, when they announced that the Bee Gees were back and would never separate again. Maurice also publicly apologized to Robin for past conflicts. During the period of temporary separation, both Robin and Maurice had recorded some songs before the reconciliation, and these songs were incorporated into the subsequent album released in 1970. The album brought continued success to the trio, reaching the third place on the US charts. This period also marked a commercial comeback for the trio, with appearances on various television programs. In 1971, a new album was released, bringing another major success, the song, song title, which reached the top of the American charts. Unfortunately, the 1970s also brought several challenges. The band faced ups and downs in popularity, releasing albums that did not achieve the same success as their earlier works. A new album released in 1973 was a proof of that, with poor sales performance. Additionally, personal problems and challenges related to drug and alcohol abuse continued to affect the Gibb brothers. However, they made efforts to musically reinvent themselves and sought collaborations with other artists. After a move to Miami, Florida, suggested by Eric Clapton, the brothers began recording at Criteria Studios, abandoning their usual ballads and embracing the disco sound. This resulted in great success, including hits like Jive Talking and Song Title, leading the group to release the album Main Course, characterized by the use of the famous falsetto. The definitive milestone of this era was their participation in the soundtrack of Saturday Night Fever. The soundtrack and the film became cultural icons, symbolizing the global disco fever. The Bee Gees' collaboration with producer Robert Stigwood resulted in unforgettable hits like How Deep Is Your Love and Song Title. 
The album became the best-selling in history at that time, with over 40 million copies sold, a total success. However, as the popularity of the disco movement waned, the Bee Gees' career was also affected. They had a last major hit in the United States with a man in 1989. This phase witnessed both the peak and the decline of the Bee Gees' popularity, shaped by the disco era's excitement and their lasting contribution to musical culture. Towards the end of the 1980s, the Bee Gees experienced a successful reunion, releasing the album ESPN in 1987. This comeback was marked by a mix of emotions, a combination of excitement and nostalgia. The album sold an incredible 2 million copies, rejuvenating the brothers' careers. This achievement not only reinforced their musical dominance but also became a moment of celebration and gratitude, especially as it reached the top spot in the UK, marking the group's success in each of the three decades, 1960s, 1970s, and also the 1980s. Unfortunately, however, a dark moment profoundly shook the Bee Gees' trajectory in 1988 when the youngest brother passed away at the age of 30 due to heart complications after years of drug abuse. The pain of losing a loved one transcended the musical sphere, and the Bee Gees felt the need to honor Andy's memory. In a demonstration of unity and support, they formed the group Bunberries with Eric Clapton, aiming to raise funds for charity. This collaboration not only reflected solidarity among the brothers but also deepened the bonds of friendship that united them. Despite personal struggles, music continued to be a source of expression and healing for the Bee Gees. They released albums like One in 1989, keeping the flame of artistic creation alive. The song, If You Were Here, was dedicated to Andy, serving not only as an emotional tribute but also as a way to channel complex feelings through art. The 1990s brought new challenges and triumphs. Facing health issues and overcoming personal obstacles, the Bee Gees released albums like Still Harders in 1997, which brought the band back to the music charts. Barry faced back problems requiring surgery, along with dealing with arthritis that threatened his ability to play the guitar. Additionally, Maurice decided to seek treatment for his alcoholism, a struggle he had been facing for several years. Their music continued to captivate the public, and the honor of the Outstanding Contribution to Music Award in 1997 was a recognition of both their achievements and resilience. The end of the decade was marked by live performances and new projects, showing that their passion for music was stronger than ever. Closing the century on December 31, 1999, the Bee Gees not only left their mark on the music world but also left a legacy of perseverance and dedication to their art. In 2001, the Bee Gees released This Is It, which turned out to be the last album of original material from the group. The album was well received, reaching the top 10 in the UK and the top 20 in the United States. The title track also stood out as a successful single in the top 20 in the UK. The Bee Gees' final performance as a trio happened in 2002. However, a tragic event deeply shook the family and fans on January 9, 2003, when Maurice underwent emergency surgery at Mount Sinai Hospital in Miami to treat an intestinal obstruction. Unfortunately, during the procedure, he suffered a cardiac arrest due to complications related to the surgery. Tragically, he passed away three days later on January 12. The family initially raised suspicions about the possibility of a medical error contributing to his death, but a subsequent autopsy revealed that Maurice had a congenital problem causing intestinal deformities. This pre-existing condition ultimately contributed to the tragedy, leading to cardiac arrest and his premature loss. Morris's funeral was held privately, attended by about 200 family and friends, including notable figures like Michael Jackson and family friend Jennifer Valipi. She shared that the event was emotional but also celebratory, highlighting how Maurice celebrated and valued life. It was touching, humorous, and everyone spoke about how he was truly a man who celebrated life. After Morris's departure, Barry and Robin initially expressed the desire to keep the name BGs as a tribute to his memory. However, over time, 
they decided to remove the group's name, leaving it to represent the three brothers together. Barry and Robin later expressed perplexity about the circumstances of Morris's death, with Robin sharing his feelings, stating that he and Maurice grew up together and spent their lives united by music. He expressed difficulty in accepting his brother's death, saying, We were kids together and teenagers, we spent our lives together because of our music. I can't accept that he's gone. I can only imagine that he's alive somewhere else. In the following years, the brothers continued to dedicate themselves to music and charitable causes. Robin toured solo in Germany, Russia, and Asia in 2004. While Barry collaborated with several renowned artists, in 2006, a poignant moment unfolded when Barry and Robin took the stage together again after his death. They sang together at a charity show in Miami to raise funds to the charity for people who died. From 2009 to 2012, Barry and Robin delivered numerous memorable performances. Additionally, in May 2010, they surprised by appearing in the finale of the ninth season of American Idol. However, in November 2011, another somber moment began as Robin Gibb was diagnosed with liver cancer at 61. His health had deteriorated in the preceding months, leading to the cancellation of some performances due to the intense pain he experienced. He still participated in a charity show in February 2012, which turned out to be his final public appearance before his death. In late April 2012, Robin contracted pneumonia and fell into a coma. Although he emerged from the coma a few weeks later, his health rapidly declined. On May 20, 2012, at the age of 62, he passed away due to liver and kidney failure, concluding his journey. Over the years, the brothers Robin and Barry maintained a tumultuous relationship, both personally and professionally, persisting until the end. However, despite all these differences, Barry paid a moving tribute at Robin's funeral, emphasizing the transformation of conflict into insignificance in the face of his brother's departure. He expressed that the previous disagreements no longer held any importance, encouraging everyone to let go of conflicts in their own lives. Until the end, we find conflict, which now means nothing, simply means nothing. If there's conflict in your lives, remember it, said the singer during the funeral. Barry also spoke about the profound connection between Robin and his twin brother Maurice, highlighting that they were now reunited. Barry shared details about Robin's internal struggle after Morris's loss a decade earlier, acknowledging that this loss had a profound impact on his brother and affected various aspects of his life. The two were beautiful, and now they're together. I think the biggest pain for Robin in the last couple of years was that he lost his twin brother. I think that did all kinds of things to him. Between September and October 2013, Barry embarked on his first solo tour, a tribute to his brothers and his musical life. During this period, he released a special collection titled Studio Souls 1967-1968. In 2016, Barry released, In the Now, his first solo album in decades, and the Bee Gees music was again distributed by Universal. The relationship between the talented Bee Gees brothers was marked by profound challenges and personal conflicts over the years. Each of them faced their internal battles while seeking success in the music industry. A curious part of the brothers' lives occurred during the peak of their careers when the trio had a special connection with Michael Jackson, developed through an intimate friend, Frank Dilio. A documentary released in 2020 revealed this interesting relationship. Frank, who was also the BG's manager for a while, was an intermediary between the two sides, and Barry Gibb informed Michael Jackson about the creative effects of cannabis. Barry claimed that many of his successes were written while under the influence of marijuana. This account led Michael Jackson to express interest in trying the drug. During a recording session, Michael Jackson and Barry decided to share a joint. Rumors even suggested that the two drove together through Neverland Ranch while enjoying the effects of the substance. Barry, the older brother, 
grappled with the pressures of fame that came with the BG's success. However, his wife played a vital role in keeping drugs out of his life, steering clear of the perilous paths of substances. On the other hand, Robin had a tumultuous relationship with amphetamines, facing a battle against addiction. The youngest Gibbs sibling added an additional burden to the others with his solo career and unfortunately developed a cocaine addiction that had a lasting impact on his health. Additionally, Maurice also had his own battle against addiction, facing problems with alcohol throughout his life, bringing additional challenges to him and his brothers. The fights among the brothers were frequent and often spilled into the media. The rise of the BGs was marked by ego issues and rivalry among them, competing for who deserved to be the lead vocalist. This competition was rooted in vocal abilities and composition talent among them. Despite the tensions, the brothers eventually overcame their differences and reached a period of considerable success, especially with the release of Saturday Night Fever, in 1975. However, the turbulent relationship between them continued to be a recurring theme. The deaths of Maurice and Robin had a profound impact on Barry, who felt the sadness and the isolation of being the last surviving member of the band. The internal struggles of each BG's member reveal the complexities behind success in the music industry. Fame brought both success and challenges to the brothers, but their stories remind us that behind the glamour of the music industry are humans with their own internal battles. Even in the face of difficulties, the music of the BGs continues to resonate, touching hearts and souls worldwide. And thus, we come to the end of today's video. Thank you for being with us once again. Share it with whoever you want, and if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel. See you in another video.